Uh, I have some guests on uh, set here with me today that I'm going to go ahead and introduce to you right now. Um, the, the folks that are here with me are from the Mountain Meadows Monument Foundation. And we are going to be talking about the Mountain Meadows Massacre today and what happened in that very, very tragic uh, event uh, that as you're watching this was 150 years ago. On September the 11th of 1857, one of the most tragic events in all of American history happened. And again, these folks are all from the Mountain Meadows Monument Foundation and uh, they have a story to tell. Bob, how about, how about kind of kicking this off, if you will, and, and uh, what happened? How did it start? What, what led up to Mountain Meadows Massacre? Well, I, I think the beginning is in Arkansas. Uh, a number of families led by Alexander Fancher, who had been to California two previous times, uh, and scouted out areas out there where he already had relatives, and wanted to go with his family and uh, start a new life, uh, basically as a rancher. Uh, and he talked to a number of other families in the area, some of them related, some of them not. And uh, so they gathered up quite a few people, about 140 people total, mm -hmm. to go to California. Right. Uh, it was probably the biggest and, and to some accounts the wealthiest wagon train that had left to go in that direction in the history of the West. Uh, 140 people, about 40 wagons, uh, 900 to 1,000 cattle, 200 horses. So that this is a this big, is a wagon, big, train. big wagon train. And a wealthy wagon train, and wealthy. too, with that, that amount of livestock. Just, in, uh, just the livestock. Exactly. Wow. That was probably more livestock than any wagon train had ever taken through. But you, you consider what they wanted to do, and that was to begin ranching, and, and horse ranching and cattle ranching uh, in California. and. Uh, the route they took was basically to go out in uh, towards Wichita, Kansas, and up through that direction, and take the route that went through Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from Salt Lake City, they would turn south and uh, go down through southwest Utah, and then over into California. Mm -hmm. uh, what they didn't know, probably, was at that time, uh, this, the Utah Territory was basically in rebellion against the United States. Yes, that's right. And uh, U.S. Army troops had been sent to Utah to enforce the will of the United States government over the territory of Utah. Right. Uh, they arrived right in the middle of this conflict, uh, could not buy provisions. Uh, they were directed to camp at Mountain Meadows, which was a fairly well-known camping place. Right. Uh, and while they were there, uh, a siege started uh, basically from the Mormon militia, aided in the beginning by some Indians. Right. Uh, the Indians dropped out of the battle pretty quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. They had been promised that the Mormon god would protect them, and when a few of them died, they decided that wasn't true. So they, they basically left the battle. Right. Uh, on September the 11th, the Mormons had decided they could not uh, could, could not defeat the entrenched wagon train. And so they, uh, John D. Lee and I believe one other man, approached the wagon train under a flag of truce and convinced them that the Indians, who they told was still besieging the train, would leave them alone if the Mormons escorted them out. But they had to be unarmed to do so. And uh, so they lured them out of the defensive positions, unarmed, and on a signal from John Higby, uh, and the signal was, Mormons do your duty, uh, the Mormon militia shot all the men and then joined by some men dressed as Indians killed the women and children, all except for 17 small children that, that not only uh, they felt was innocent blood, but they also felt they were too young to testify. Uh, and that's where it stood. Those children were scattered out to Mormon homes uh, two years later, the Army, U.S. Army, right. uh, retrieved those children and returned them to their families in Arkansas. So that's the basics of the whole thing. That's the basics. There's, there's a lot of details in <laughs> oh, this. Oh, yeah, huge. Uh, but that's the basic story. Well, you know, I would like to amplify a little bit. Uh, here on Truth Outreach, we did a program, uh, well, we did five programs about five years ago about this very thing. 
It took us five programs to get through what you just gave us in three minutes or four minutes there. So there's a huge amount of detail that's, uh, that's, uh, that we've skimmed over here. But it's so important to understand, folks, this is American history. This is the worst tragedy, uh, the, the most um, heinous tragedy, in my opinion, in American history because it's been swept underneath the carpet by the Mormon church. This innocent wagon train, a very wealthy wagon train, simply left Arkansas and was headed to California and found itself in the wrong place at the wrong time. And by order of Brigham Young, uh, the Mormon church denies this. They, they do everything that they can to say that they are not culpable, that it was just uh, some Mormons acting on their own that did this. Uh, evidence proves otherwise. We have the diary entry in Hunting, Hunting, uh, Dimmick Huntington's uh, diary, who was Brigham Young's Indian interpreter in the meeting that was done in Brigham Young's office where Brigham Young told the Indians that they could have the cattle if they would attack this wagon train. Well, the Indians did that, as, as, as Bob related. And uh, these old boys from Arkansas put up a pretty hefty fight. They, the Indians got the drop on them and, and killed and wounded some initially, but, but they pretty quick uh, came to the defense and started killing some of the Indians. And the Indians were told that the Mormon God would protect them. And when they started uh, being killed, they, they lost their taste for the fight. 